Well, welcome everybody to our addiction recovery program from the Sunshine Coast Health Center up here in Powell River, BC. And I think for the next few sessions, we'll talk about some principles of living a meaningful life. And as you may or may not know, uh, the program here at Sunshine Coast is, is, we call it meaning therapy, based on the work of Dr. Paul Wong. And Dr. Wong was heavily influenced by Viktor Frankl, the great psychiatrist. And Frankl, Frankl's belief was that the most fundamental motivation in a human being was uh, what he called the will to meaning, in addition to survival, of course. So this, uh, this is an interesting concept, right, that this idea that it is fundamental to human beings that they need to make sense of their lives and have some purpose to live out. In fact, Frankl had always said that addiction was a response to living a life that lacked what he called personal meaning. So, if I didn't feel my life was filled up, uh, if I didn't feel alive, if I didn't feel energized, then I could turn to addiction as a way of dealing with that existence. And Dr. Wong's work is based on that. He puts a psychological basis to Frankl's work. So this idea then of meaningful living, because of course according to Frankl, the solution to addiction would then to go on and live a meaningful life, and therefore the purpose of the addiction, which was a response to a meaningless life, would be taken away. And if the purpose is taken away, then you probably wouldn't have much interest in using substances. So that's the basic idea. So I thought we'd uh, talk about, well, what does it actually mean to live this kind of life that's energizing, that fills you up? And in psychology, what we try to do is we try to find patterns or themes or principles uh, that's uh, a, a whole bunch of people uh, follow and then things seem to work out for them. We recognize everybody's an individual and individuals interpret the world differently, they do different things, they think different ways. But in all of this variation, sometimes there are principles about human nature which psychology tries to discover from looking at all these various individuals. And so one of those principles of living a meaningful life seems to be the idea of being true to yourself. And I've got in my hands here, this is uh, uh, what's known as an AA chip. So this is a chip from Alcoholics Anonymous, which they give out at various uh, uh, times in sobriety. This is a just for today chip, so if you were to walk into an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, you would pick up this silver chip here. It just, uh, it's got 24 on it, so that means 24 hours of recovery. But you can get one month, two months, three months, etc. And read on this chip, it's quite interesting because they've written, to thine own self be true. So that's kind of interesting. Eh? Be true to yourself. And they borrowed that from Shakespeare, by the way. In the play Hamlet, Polonius tells his son Laertes, this above all, to thine own self be true. Unfortunately, neither Polonius nor his son took uh, their own advice and uh, <laughs> both got it. That's the thing about a Shakespearean play. If you act against the natural order of the universe, you're toast. But it's interesting that Alcoholics Anonymous would, uh, would find that saying important enough to put on one of its chips, right? To thine own self be true. So this is maybe a principle at work here that to live a meaningful life, to feel energized, to feel fulfilled, it may be very important to be true to yourself. But as psychologists have pointed out, so few people actually have achieved that. Most people they seem to operate on things like fear. So, for example, in the addiction field, I always uh, sort of make jokes about this one, is going to a dance clean and sober. Well, for a lot of our fellows here, I mean, this is a, an unsettling uh, idea. Oh, I'm going to go to this dance clean and sober and I'm going to dance. Holy jeez, I've never done that. And they get very self-conscious and very nervous. And so very often they will say, well, I'm not going to go to the dance because I'm just too uncomfortable. It's, it's not good for my recovery. What they're actually saying is, 
I'm afraid of that feeling of uncomfortableness, so I'm not going to do it. Or so they're going to sort of run away. And is that being true to yourself? Uh, or is that operating on fear, right? And this, a lot of people do this. They operate on fear. They operate on what they don't want out of life. Well, I don't want all these negative emotions, right? So I'm going to avoid them. Well, that may not be such a good idea. Maybe that's not really being true to yourself. But here's a, here's a good example of this idea of why it's so important to be true to yourself. And I borrow this from uh, Bruce Alexander, who's a, he just retired. Uh, he's a psychologist, he was a psychologist at uh, the Simon Fraser University. And uh, a few years back, he uh, conducted a series of experiments on rats and morphine use. No, which later came to be known as Rat Park. And Rat Park is really quite fascinating. And it's uh, making a bit of a comeback now. Sort of, no one paid attention to it for years, but now I keep reading more and more about it. And Rat Park, the, uh, the idea behind it was Alexander knew about uh, an, a very famous experiment that had gone on in the addiction field in which you put a rat in a cage and then you give the rat the choice between morphine or water. And inevitably, the rat chooses the morphine and will just keep taking the morphine, become physically dependent on it, and you know, no, doesn't eat properly, doesn't sleep, and it's not a good thing. And this was used by uh, a lot of people as evidence that the morphine uh, had addicted the rat. It had. As soon as the morphine had hit the rat's brain, it had hijacked the brain, as they call it. And Bruce Alexander didn't really buy into that. He had another idea. He thought that maybe the rat used the morphine because it was stuck in this cage. And it, it wasn't freed to be a rat. So he got the idea that, well, well I'll build a, a Disneyland for rats, which became known as Rat Park. So it's a 200 square foot uh, box in which you put in cedar shavings and lots of colorful things and tubes that the rats could climb through and food and, and a community because rats are communal animals. So eight females, eight males, stick them all together and then offer them the choice between the drug and the water and see what happens. Well. It was really quite interesting that in every case uh, they went for the water. So that's interesting. And Bruce Alexander concluded that it wasn't that the drug had hijacked the brain of this rat stuck in this cage, and that was the reason why the rat kept taking the morphine. Alexander concluded that the rat wasn't, was in an environment that did not allow the rat to be a rat. And that if you could if the rat were allowed to do things that rats do, such as be in a community and climb through cedar shavings and little tunnels and be, uh, you know, do whatever rats do, then the drug would have no purpose, right? Sort of sounds like Viktor Frankl, right? Anyway, it's so interesting, uh, interesting experiment there that maybe this idea of being true to yourself, to uh, to be free to to do things that that are important to you that you value to be free of self-consciousness of stress of all of these pressures maybe that's a huge piece of what it means to live a meaningful life anyway that's one idea and uh, we'll be back uh, next time with some more ideas